Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And I have a question for you. This is an important question, so give it some real consideration. Don't just slough it off. But is Bitcoin better than cash? Now, regardless whether your answer is yes or no, take it a little bit deeper than just your immediate answer. If your answer was yes, how would you back that up? If your answer is no, how would you back that up? And take a moment to consider what it really means to say, is Bitcoin better than cash? In today's video, we're going to look at a couple of different businesses, billionaires, and other entities that consider Bitcoin better than cash and they're putting their money where their mouth is. So let's get into this. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? That's what our channel is all about. We're here to try and help you uh, by giving you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. Hey, it really helps us out with the Google algorithms. Makes a big difference. So I'm not a financial advisor. My background is computers. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion based on my computer knowledge and background. So cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. And so take any investment you make into cryptocurrency seriously. Make careful consideration. Understand the risks that you're getting involved in. Don't just watch my videos, but dig deeper. Do some research into what cryptocurrency is and why are these people consider Bitcoin better than cash. Now, before you invest in Bitcoin, you should have a strategy. And one of the things that I've learned by looking at the history of Bitcoin, now we know that history does not necessarily repeat itself, but it can be a good way to gauge future performance. Doesn't always happen. There are many things that, like who knew that COVID-19 was gonna happen this year? And it has had a huge impact on all kinds of things. And so there are things that can happen that would disrupt what's happened in the past. So even though history may give you a good clue as to what might go on, it doesn't always work out that way. Anyway, enough of that. If you took $1,000 and bought Bitcoin and then three years later, you would have had what? So if you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin on January 1 of 2017 and then on December 31st, 2019, three years later, sold your Bitcoin, you would have gotten $7,206 from that original $1,000 investment. Now, this goes back through the entire history of Bitcoin, but as you can see during Bitcoin's lifetime, you would not have lost any money if you had held Bitcoin for at least three years. In fact, the worst that you would have done was 18% return on your investment. And in some three-year periods, that's comparable to the S&P 500. And as you can also see, there's a lot of years where you would have done a lot better than just 18%. So when it comes to forming a strategy for Bitcoin, you may want to consider holding on for at least three years. Um, because in most cases, historically in all cases, um, you would have made money. And so it's quite possible that in the next three years, if you buy Bitcoin today, that you're likely going to be ahead. In fact, when you look at it from just this year, the Bitcoin price year to date on January 1, 2020, Bitcoin was $7,174. Today, the price of Bitcoin, August 26, 2020, is $11,418. That's a percentage growth so far this year of 60%. There's not very many places where you could invest money and get a 60% return in just eight or nine months, okay? So 60% is fabulous given that we're talking about, I mean, it's really, we're, we're close enough to September 1st, we can call this nine months. And so pretty, pretty, pretty phenomenal. 
And this is part of the reason, both of the slides that I just showed you, is part of the reason why a billion dollar company has decided that Bitcoin is better than cash for them. MicroStrategy buys $250 million in Bitcoin, calling the crypto superior to cash. Publicly traded business intelligence firm MicroStrategy purchased 21,454 Bitcoin on Tuesday, effectively pouring all 250 million of its planned inflation hedging funds into the digital currency. This investment reflects our belief that Bitcoin as the world's most widely adopted cryptocurrency is a dependable store of value and an attractive investment asset with more long-term appreciation potential than holding cash, says CEO Michael J. Saylor. And so that's a, a pretty remarkable thing for a billion dollar company to be pouring all of its cash assets into or what they're calling planned inflation hedge, hedging funds into uh, Bitcoin. Canadian software startup puts 40% of its cash reserves into Bitcoin. So here's a different company and this company has come to the same decision. Now it's interesting because both of these companies spent hundreds and hundreds of hours researching these decisions before they made them. And they had been working on these decisions for a long, long time. And it's interesting that now that both companies have gone public around the same period of time, that, that over the last number of months they had been researching it out and they both came to the same conclusion. So my thought is, there's a whole lot of other companies out there that are coming to the same conclusion, but they're doing it quietly. They're not ready yet to go public to say, oh, me too. And so I think over the next number of months, we're going to see a lot more. And this is just my opinion. I don't have any factual information to back up what I'm about to say. But in my opinion, I don't think these two companies are alone. I think there'll be a lot of other companies that will come up and say, hey, publicly, me too, we're putting our cash reserves into Bitcoin. An Ottawa-based graphics software firm, Snappa, announced Monday its decision to move a significant amount of its cash reserves into Bitcoin, citing concerns of inflation and global economic uncertainty. Now, the interesting thing about this one in particular is the uh, CEO, the chief executive of this company, Snappa, decided to write an article explaining his decision and the article is fascinating we will be putting a link to the article in the comment section on our youtube channel in the description uh, on the youtube channel so if you want to read the entire article yourself you're more than welcome to but i'm going to give you a couple of snippets in it in this article he starts off by breaking down the history of money a little bit he goes into a very brief history of money and he says, in order to truly grasp the significance of Bitcoin, it's important to understand the history of money. Even though I majored in finance with a major in economics, this topic was completely glossed over when I attended university. And so one of the reasons why he digs into the history of money is because most people don't know and don't understand what, what the history of money is and what really makes money valuable or worth something. And he starts out by talking about how glass beads were used in African societies as a form of money. And he talks about what was the failure to using glass beads as a form of money. And it, it's actually very interesting. I would recommend that you read the article to kind of catch up on some of those things. The other thing that he talked about, or a later, a little bit later on, is due to its due to the scarcity, gold has maintained its purchasing power over time. And so he goes from glass beads, covers a number of different subjects, and of course, eventually gets into gold, because gold has always been a form of money, a form of uh, storing of wealth. I mean, there used to be a one dollar uh, coin, and that coin was a gold coin. 
So while an ounce of gold was valued at $20 USD in 1920, that same ounce of gold is now worth close to 2,000 US dollars. Said differently, the US dollar has lost 99% of its purchasing power relative to gold over the course of the last century. And so the difference between gold and the US dollar is gold has a certain uh, scarcity. And that scarcity is because it takes... Have you ever watched uh, that TV program where they're, they're actually mining for gold? And how this one operation, they're, they're mining for gold and they're practically going broke or they do go broke. And this other group... They're mining for gold and they're making a lot of money and they're coming out with millions of dollars and they're doing super well. That program, that TV series, it, it really exemplifies how difficult and how scarce gold is. How difficult it is to mine and how scarce it is to find new gold. And so that scarcity is what drives the value of gold. The fact that you can't find more gold makes the existing gold even more valuable. And he's comparing that, especially in the part where he's talking about the history of the U.S. dollar, to the U.S. dollar and to money. And how money, when it loses its scarcity, it really has lost its value. It's lost its usefulness and it's lost its ability to store value for you, which is really what the purpose of money is. US dollars are there to store value for you so that when you use it later, you get the same value out of it if you had used it today. To summarize, we're now at a point where parking dollars in a savings account or buying short-term government debt is yielding a negative return when adjusted for inflation. Now, I'm still giving you quotes out of this longer article uh, that the SNAPA uh, CEO wrote because I thought it was very useful and I wanted to share it with you. And so he's talking about why he considered cash to be not as useful, not as good as Bitcoin. What's even more worrisome is that nation states across the globe are more indebted than ever and are likely to continue doing increasing amounts of quantitative easing and UBI going forward. The end result will be further currency debasement and a loss of purchasing power. And so really a lot of people don't worry that much about quantitative easing, but maybe they don't worry that much about it is because they haven't been taught about money, what gives money its value, and how money is like about the purchasing power of money and how it's been losing its purchasing power and what will cause it to lose that purchasing power even faster. It turns out that professional investors are seeing the same risks and starting to gain exposure to Bitcoin as a result. One of the most notable examples of this is billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones. He recently announced that he has almost 2% of his net worth in Bitcoin. Now, when I first heard about Paul Tudor Jones uh, and he had 2% of his net worth in Bitcoin, I kind of glossed it over. But the more time goes on, the more I realize this is significant. This is significant because Paul Tudor Jones is a billionaire. And he's not only just a regular billionaire. I mean, there's billionaires that were out there making widgets. The widgets became popular. Their businesses grew and they became a billionaire as a result. This particular guy was a billionaire because he was a hedge fund manager. And as a hedge fund manager, he's involved in stocks and bonds. Basically, he's involved in understanding different asset classes and the values that they represent. And for him, from that perspective, from that mindset, looking at different assets, looking at how they create value and making a decision that he needs to put his net worth into Bitcoin, um, is, is really, really significant. Now, why 2% and is he going to put more? Paul Tudor Jones hasn't explained or elaborated on that. But I'm thinking, given that he's already got 2%, why would he stop there? That's my opinion. I'm going to stick by it for now until Paul Tudor Jones himself 
counterdicts it. So, and then as, as he's wrapping up this article where he's describing why they made a, de a decision for SNAPA to put all of their cash reserves or 40% of their cash reserves into Bitcoin, he goes on and says, it's one thing for a wealthy individual to buy Bitcoin on their own, but it's a whole different story when it's a $1 billion plus publicly traded company that needs board approval to do so. So now he's talking about the company that we started this uh, video with. This investment reflects our belief that Bitcoin as the world's most widely adopted cryptocurrency is a dependable store of value and attractive investment asset with more long-term appreciation potential than holding cash. MicroStrategy has recognized Bitcoin as a legitimate investment asset that can be superior to cash and accordingly has made Bitcoin the principal holding in its treasury reserve strategy. So think about that for a second. Here you have a billion dollar company. That company is traded on the public stock market. Now that means that as the CEO, the chief executive officer, you have legally binding fiduciary responsibilities to your stockholders. That means that you can go to jail if you do stupid stuff with the money that a particular publicly traded company has. It also means that the board of that company has a lot more control than if you were privately held. That board can say, uh, no, you're not going to do that. And he would have to either abide by that or risk uh, jail time. And so with him coming out and making a statement that our belief that Bitcoin means it's his belief and the board's belief of that company, and for him to say it publicly means he's risking that if he's making a bad decision and the public doesn't like that decision, that his stock value will drop. And as a result, he could either be in trouble in terms of getting fired or in trouble in terms of going to jail, um, depending on the severity of the decisions that he made and the kind of things that the SEC gets involved with. Um, so it may, you know, depending on the severity, the SEC may or may not get involved with the situation. And so anyway, I think it's pretty bold for a publicly traded $1 billion company to come out and say, hey, we're putting our cash reserves, our uh, hedge against inflation, our hedge against um, uh, crisis in the future, we're going to put that and store it in Bitcoin. So that's the conclusion of my video today. As always, if you want to dig into any of these articles a little bit deeper, click the link to look at this video on YouTube and you will find the links to these articles in the description. In the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts? Do you have any comments? Do you disagree with anything that I say? Hey, I would love to hear your comments. Even if you disagree with me, um, just add your polite disagreements to the comment section below. And in the meantime, do me a favor and like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.